right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Star Trek Resignation, a Discovery Home Companion. Uh, yep, uh, it's me. It's Wade Bowen. And with me, as has been the case this season, is uh, Sean Parada. Hey, hey, home stretch, baby. Yeah, and Glenn Hall. Hello, second building again for some reason. Uh, yeah, last but not least... For for some reason, do you? <laughs> yeah. do you I really? Know. Well, it's, boy, yeah, I, I think we were all willing to just not bring it up, Glenn. But uh... <laughs> right, like, oh, he's like, uh, did you read my rider, guys? I got top billing. Mother-. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm in breach of contract now. <laughs> I, I promise, Glenn. Glenn, I meant nothing by it. I, I promise, <laughs> I Glenn. No, no, this show does need Glenn. Glenn knows what Star Trek is. <laughs> right. <laughs> there is a tide. There is sometimes. Yeah, and there is a tide. That's the name of this episode. Hey, let's get into it. There is hey. a tide. Yeah, there, there, there is a tide. There, sometimes there's a hey. A, there's a summary. Maybe who wants to do one? I mean, I, I, I got I got another stab at a at a one or two sentence summary. Do it. Die Hard on Discovery plus negotiations at Federation headquarters. The long and short of it, that is, yeah, uh, that yeah. is w- what's going on. In the episode, yeah, nothing really of on. like major consequence. Yeah. Blue guy, blue guy dies. Yes, the the Andorian yes, ring. Yeah. All right, back. so uh, so general thoughts then. Uh, you you did not. You were just kind of meh for this episode. Well, you know the thing is, I uh, rewatching this episode, I wasn't as incensed by as that I had been by the other recent episodes we've rewatched. And I think a big reason is that this episode in and of itself contains a lot of interesting directions. Yeah, yeah. Sean was the one that was like, meh. Oh, no, I fucking liked this episode. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love this episode. Yeah, 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 no, 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 I I like I like this episode quite a bit. I really, uh, yeah, I don't know. I I think the the Orissa turn like is solid. Like I like that she, I don't know, you know, seems genuine. And I like that that scene makes sense. Like, I like that they, they, you know, they they could easily fumble that whole negotiation thing and just, like, really, you know, fuck it up and have him be like, "Uh, no, I won't listen to you, blah, blah, blah. Or her be like, I want all this nonsense. You know, like, for that, for it to really just be, like, an actual, I thought that was fun. Yeah, no, I mean, this is, this this episode, for me, I like this, ep- the problems with this episode are every episode around it, is what right. I thought. But this, uh, the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, finally, they're doing what they need to be doing. Like, the bad guys are, don't think they're the bad guys. They're, they're making hard choices that, you know, don't have easy answers. They're doing all the Star Trek shit of like this is this is the episode they finally talk about what the Federation is about in a way that is not empty platitudes. Right. And all it took was having a new character do it and Michael just play right. die hard in the ship. <laughs> it's 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 insane. I mean I mean it it just speaks to, you know, all of the the tumult that we've discussed endlessly like that surrounds this show but that like it it takes until the penultimate episode for us to discover that like oh like right like the emerald chain like really just thinks they're the good guy like they really think that this is how to help the guy obviously you know she wants power. Obviously, she you know she wants yeah. the she she's not willing to to you know stand trial in order to bring about her piece. But like but I but you know it's easy to believe her. It's easy to say like okay like yeah she's doing she's helping the way she like the only way she knows how to help you know right and it, it's it's like this episode does that really well. The problem is this is the only episode that does it. Like yeah. they they go yeah. through they introduce new characters to like oh by the way this is how we're going to show you that this is a different side of things it's like these good new characters like the chair guy the, yeah the chair guy and because he's a sign but but at the same time like <laughs> you, you could have been doing this shit all I along know. well and, and that's and that's exactly my complaint like particularly with uh, the scientist i forget what the character's name is but aurelio uh, oh oh and aurelio. later and <laughs> aurelio <laughs> he, he, right um but you know his th- this is to, to me what's frustrating is like his storyline and and the his point of view is genuinely interesting and 
you know, he is this guy who, like you said, Sean, like believes that the the Emerald Chain are the good guys. He mm-hmm. believes that, you know, what he is doing is worthwhile. Like he had an interesting backstory, and like it is, you know, I will give them credit. Like, given that they introduced this character in this episode, I think they 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 incorporated his backstory rather well. But how much better would it have been if this had been? I still believe that like this show needs to be more episodic, but like if this char- if we had seen you know uh, uh, this ca- character peppered throughout the first season, espousing the same viewpoint, like no, Osira is more than she appears. Like the Emerald Chain does good things, and I, I I'm a broken record on this, but like I, I keep coming back to the portrayal of the Dominion in uh, Deep Space Nine. Sure, sure. Because th- they do make some effort to establish that like the Dominion is not like a cackling you know evil all the time eh. like i mean they they end, they, they kind of do but, they, they yeah. by the end they kind of are but like you know they, they yeah, even try in the to beginning s- they're 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 the dominion shows up as space mafia and that's kind of what they're <laughs> well thinking. space well well they, they they do kind of like the thing that i i i, I think that they kind of were trying to establish that uh the emerald chain is doing it in that you know they even talk about it this episode all the prime directive violations and I think I said in a previous pod that, um, you know, it would have been interesting if you saw, like, what these pre-warp civilizations that the chain had uh, reached out to, like, how right. they had developed. Because I think it would be similar to what you see with the Dominion, where, Sean, for, for your info, I know you don't care, but... Um, Couldn't possibly in, care in, in the Dominion, most of, like, I guess it really only applies to the... Um, the Vorta and the Jem'Hadar, but like their their henchmen consider the founders of the Dominion gods, right. and because they're they're all yeah they're good. yeah they're space gods too exactly the, the people. Hold on, to be clear, we're talking about Dominion voting systems. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Stop yeah, yeah, yeah. the okay. steal. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So just make it sure yeah, I know where we're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did like this episode. They do get into a little thing where Vance is like uh, really boohooing about them breaking the prime directive but like they're not starf they're not f- the federation it's not their the federation's place isn't to to be the 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 cop of the galaxy to chide people for breaking the prime directive their their whole thing is like we're just gonna do our own thing so I, that kind of rubbed me wrong then he's like no they're doing all these these pre-warp cultures that well don't seem to, that they're not pre like the quajon aren't the quajon aren't pre-warp they know all about warp. They've got books j- warped off of there, uh, but it's just a. It, it kind of. I think that was. I, I think that was the writing kind of muddling things up because I think what he was trying to say is, separate from the shit that went down on Quajon, there were other. He. I think he said specifically like, "Oh, you have a dozen prime directive violations," and she even says, "I think that like you know we're under no obligation to do that, but you know what? Fair enough. We'll you know right. we'll do all this." They do straight up pretty much call Quajon a pre warp. Society. Which oh, they is, did. I, I, yeah. it, it was a little muddled from when I was watching it. Yeah, which is like, okay, they might be. Maybe a few of them got off, and you know, like it's like how Saru's people were right. Warp, I guess, but like it's still like I don't know. Uh, well, the, the Prime Directive is kind of <laughs> notorious in in Trek for kind of being uh, inconsistently yeah. enforced both on and off screen. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah. the The thing that annoyed me was just that they're trying to enforce it on other cultures, which right. is like that's kind of anti federal what they're not supposed. To, but I, yeah, I, I get that. But I also understand, especially since the conversation is about the Federation merging with the Emerald Chain. Um, right. 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 But even hey, separate hey, from that, hey, hey, nerds. Yeah. Good stuff happened in this episode. Yeah, yeah. Let's like, <laughs> stop nerdgasming all over the Prime Directive. Sean, the Prime right. Directive is a very don't important- care. I know, Glenn. I know exactly what the Prime Directive is. Right. I right. know it's important. I and don't you know give a shit. Order they one. didn't mention the Prime Directive at all in this episode, so let's not. They. I mean, they, they did didn't say it. Prime Directive. They did not say Prime Directive. They just they talked about what. The- he, say, he says Prime Directive at one. Shut up! Oh, Shut I don't up! Care. It's yeah. It's like Order Number One or whatever they want to call it. But I mean, they talk about that's the what prime they call it in TOS. I I know, but uh, yeah, that's but why Sean I brought know. it up. Yeah, he Glenn, doesn't care. Glenn, I swear uh, to God. But I mean, okay, let's just get into details of this episode. The things that did work and the things that didn't. Like the the previously on. 
actually worked. Yeah, <laughs> but right, they actually the, <laughs> showed you the things you need to see. Yeah, so. I mean, I was annoyed with previously there was this guy in episode two that right. we forgot about, so here he is. That which sucked. I, don't, I hate yeah. that guy. Like that was lame, but whatever. They did it. It's it's fine. Whatever. It's annoying that they was like, oh, we forgot about this, and here he is. But right, they put him in the previously on, and they did all the shit they needed to, and they got off, and then yeah. the ship. Spore drives out of there, and Burnham and Michael are are like, oh, no. And then all of a sudden, without any explanation, they're like, oh, yeah, they're going, oh, we can chase them easily. We're, they don't even mention transwarp tunnels like they did. They say the courier network. Well, and, right, I guess he explained it in the last episode, so he's like, oh, great, we'll use, I don't, so I, I don't, so let, maybe. But they, 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 he did, he said there's a transwarp tunnels that the couriers don't take, and in this episode, he calls it the courier Network, network that yeah. nobody you that even couriers won't use. He calls it the courier network in the in the episode before this one, which is also stupid because they don't use it. Just yeah, don't call it that. I agree. And, and and it's like this whole the whole season this this episode worked in so many ways, but this little detail was just bugged me because if they've got these fucking transport tunnels and nobody can travel and it's decimate people would be using them at the risk of their lives right and they had and they you like whatever like osira uses it with no problem to get to the plot well right so that's so what so the size of her ship like uh, you know like book ship is is this big and her ship is this big you know like so she can also like just like go go through there right what's the danger to her like those giant Pieces of right. debris to book ship are not giant to Osiris's ship. Right. Like it's they're nothing. It probably weakened their shields on the way. Sure, the, the, yeah, the, like right. it's, the it's burn like, happened 120 years ago, and they've been fighting for f- to find ways to get around the galaxy again. And then there's like, oh, there's this thing, but nobody uses it. Like, like nobody's the trying. Like what? just clear them out. Like yeah, just yeah. clear like, the what? debris. Like what there's are your doing? solutions right here, staring you in the face. And then the second, the last episode, they're like, oh, by the way, we could use it, but it, it's, it's tough. It just, it's like, hard, so we don't. Plot stuff. Man. And it's, it's, yeah, yeah. And then then and then they get through the other side, and uh, Vance's right hand lady is like, oh, uh, oh, oh, look, they're extending subspace. Like it's a no brain. Oh look! Right. Oh look at them extending subspace. Like I have relevant oh. information potentially from Voyager. I do know that when they, you know, whenever they talk about potentially using trans trans warp conduits to get back to the Alpha conduit, there is a concern about like Federation shields. I think th- they say something. It's like we won't be able to uphold our structural integrity field. And actually, in a recent episode, Seven of Nine talks about how the Borg use a specific like projected structural integrity field to yeah um and you know what glenn i'm going to spoil voyager for you you know what they do they figure out how to use it and they get home <laughs> so like so there and, that, and <laughs> it's 900 years la- it's like 800 years later wait. and they still don't <laughs> wait so you're telling me they get back yeah, they get back at the end of Voyager. What? So I know. Right. You're saying it doesn't end with a silent clock after they, you know. Right. But I just told you how they, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah it is. They, I, you know, look, I assumed. And they, so they have the technology foreseeably to, or maybe they lost it. Well, there's also literally a Voyager in the fleet. Yeah. Yeah. They've got the Voyager. So, well, yeah, we saw that ship. So, I mean. Which, by the way, reminds me. When, that, I did like just visually the scene uh, where uh, Bookship is like, you know, transforming through the debris and stuff. I agree with you guys that it makes no sense that like th- that this, you know, solution staring at everyone in the face would be allowed to continue to be this cluttered. But um, right. And then like the fact that they they go through and they don't talk about they just oh, we did this just again strikes me as like uh, well we don't want to get in the weeds about that because it might confuse the audience like right. it feels like feels like another pro- i'm i'm producer a real thing. dick to I, this I certain is, producer I right. but i it feels like something i've heard before so yeah. yeah um but anyway i was just saying the 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 transforming modular ship thing to me i think would have been a cooler way to quote unquote upgrade discovery and the and the other like federation ships versus the weird floating nacelles right yeah, I mean, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. would have sure. been awesome. Been. Yeah, what? Yeah, what a fucking <laughs> yeah. rule. You're, you're I can't. Right. I'm not gonna yell at you for that. You're right. Yeah, what? Oh, the show's stupid. Good job. <laughs> you did it. 
Thank you. So, I mean, so that kind of drove me crazy at the beginning, but then then they get wheelchair scientist who also loves Andorian opera. So that's convenient. But uh, I mean, having a guy who like, who explains what, again, why everybody hates the Federation because by the galaxy's view, the Federation is hoarding their technology and Osira plans on giving it freely. They're not even to these pre-warp though. She wants to free people from the yoke of dilithium. This guy thinks. And, and, a lot of this stuff, like you could get political, you could make political well, right. metaphors, you could get talking about American empire. Like we, we, you know, we say, talk a lot of nice game and about how, you know, we're out trying to help, but it's like, no, we're trying to help everybody. And then, you know, Paul is like, you know, she genocided a whole fucking planet. And like, right. no, she would never do that. That's not what I was taught. That's, in- that's my, that is sort of like, right, my objection. To him is that like he he's like on a ship that she just took over and like is playing all nice right because he's there I guess but it seems like she's been doing this stuff for a long time and he has no idea yeah no like not I, until he gets on Discovery and watches her blow up a blue guy is she like is he like ha. Huh. They do, because they do, I don't know, I was on board with it, because she goes through a lot of trouble to say, like, I never showed you this shit before. And then it's true, you're right. It. No, you're right, that's fair enough. And, you know, yeah, this. I'm just spreading this capitalism yeah. <laughs> that's going to save everybody, and, and your science is going to, you know, be forwarded, and we're not going to, you know, like, and it, I don't... It, this is the kind of shit that I wish Star Trek were leaning into more because yeah. that's what when all the people that claim to be big Trekkies talk about what they love about this post scarcity future, it's the luxury gay space communism. And finally, you right. know, this gets into a little bit more luxury gay space communism with when when we finally get in my notes to where all the shit that <laughs> uh Vance <laughs> is talking to Osira about. Yeah, I don't know. This this episode, I was on board for it. It was like, finally, they're doing the things. And I was, I watched it the first time, and then I rewatched it to do this. And I was like, I was like, oh, please. I remember liking things the first time, the first time through this watch. And, and then the second time, I hated it. And luckily, this episode did not do that to me. Uh, next episode? Well, I... I... <laughs> you, I mean, you didn't like next episode the first no. time through. No, 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 no. Definitely not. Like... Because uh, I forgot who who wrote this one. I'm sorry. Something. Uh, I can tell but, you. Hold on. Uh, I did. Yeah. It was. <laughs> it it our, does our, say our, Sean Parada. Weird. Oh, oh weird. wow. Right? Yeah. yeah um, I did no. know it was something Lynn or something. Uh, uh, so this is. Uh, this is Justin, Justin Lynn. Yes. But it was only one writer, which is like, okay. It's uh, Kenneth Lynn. Uh, wrote and uh, got a story credit, and then oh, Jonathan Frakes. I forgot Jonathan. Jonathan Frakes, Frakes direct, yeah, Riker yes, directed this that. I one. saw that's fun. So he's a great. He's he's a fun. Nobody gets mad when Riker well, yeah, he, directs he does a good Star job Trek. directing track. But yeah, with Lynn was the sole writer on this, and I don't know. Like it's when I start seeing a whole bunch of writers and story by mm-hmm. on these episodes that I get a little bit dodgy. Like uh oh, and I mean, I'm usually like right. Movies. There's just yeah, they usually end up being really shitty episodes. <laughs> well, I just mean was... just just in in film and TV in general. When you see you know four uh, right. different you know screenwriter credits. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, sometimes it can work well. Yeah, sometimes it just works. Like, well. yeah, if we're gonna talk, uh, yeah, in the pale moonlight is has gone with all sorts of rewrites, and if we're gonna go to DS Nine, but that's a great episode. But I won't, won't go into that. Talk about it on another podcast. So so. For reference, Kenneth Lynn is also the guy who he co-wrote the uh, Sanctuary episode, the Quajon episode. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Right. right. So it's, you know, in- inconsistent. He's one well, for two. Well, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know, maybe his script was good. Right. And, maybe co-wrote yeah, like, is uh, the problem. I don't know. I mean, nobody's, a, it's, there's a whole room. So when, even when one yeah, writer gets yeah. a credit, you can't, with a show like this, you can't really say that he was the only person involved but but it is interesting to see when they only have one writer and they and how did book ship crash into discovery how like didn't they the shield the bad the food oh because they had to take down their shields at the last second to get 
through to go through the, the FDA. And so okay. that's they timed it just right, and it was edge of your seat and action. Great. Fine. I knew right. I okay. That's very funny, right? I just thought they like had to get in before the Federation door shut. Right, I didn't realize right. there was like an added layer of like. It has to be right on them. That's right. Funny. Yeah, because I mean, Osiris like, how the fuck did that happen? They're like, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Very good. Yeah, and I liked statements with the chair guy. He's like, sorry, uh, I'm the only one that can do the spore thing, and he's like, hey, hey, Anthony Rent, it's been 900 years. We're just gonna grow more of this tardigrade right. still. It's like, well, you can do that. Yeah, there's been advances made, and he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Because he's like, Ray's you're going to have to kill like, me to... You're going to rip it out of me. He's like, no. No, oh no my I God. would never. I'm I'm not a bad... Yeah. They, and it led to the, like, he's not a bad guy. He's a scientist who's pursuing science for science aims. Yeah. And he's, you know, and he's the more... He's the moral clarity of, you know, what Osira, the goodness in her, I guess. Yeah. Because, you know, he has a whole story about how she picked him up out of a... He was like, hey, look, I was born with a genetic defect. And the world sucks. If it weren't for Osira, a space Hitler would have picked me up in a second and murdered me. Right. And then, and then Paul is like, "Oh, I know." It's perhaps not like the one has about to say. Perhaps like the one you had on your ship. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, I, I just toasted one. Uh, oh, boy. Right. Oh, yeah. So maybe this Federation isn't that great because we're the ones that are celebrating all these space sailors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Wolf. laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and then the. Episode two guys just a ham black hat You'll give you a lofty position as being a skull on my candy dish or I'm, I'm still so yeah. distracted by the fact that he looks like um Tim Heidecker. The he, bad he, guy from episode two? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, what, Z- Z- I forget what his fucking name Zara. is. Zara. Zara. Zara, um, yeah. He he looks I I think I said this at the time. He looks specifically like Tim Heidecker his character from I Think You Should Leave, where he's like the the douchey jazz fan with the ponytail. Yeah, he looks a little bit like him. Yeah, yeah just a little bit, but enough to be distracting for no, me, that's right? Funny. Yeah. I keep hearing him I, say, I mean, Roy Donk. <laughs> yeah, he's just got, I said it before, and y'all were like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's got James Spader <laughs> energy to me. Like He does have a James Spader. You are correct about that. Yeah. Like that, that like. That slimy bad guy yeah. kind of quality. I, it's, an, it's an energy I would call like lazily threatening. Yeah, yeah, that's just, yeah. Or leisurely threatening, maybe, is a better way of putting it. Yeah. And then another thing, worked well in the episode, but I think I hate it. If we're going to nerd out, Nerd Corner again was, I've never eaten a real apple. And she's like, oh, you've never had a real apple? The replicators suck. And Orions have apples, which is, all right, Nerd Corner. Orions have apples, but humans don't. Uh, Osira and Vance. Are no, I, I remember that like, part you're talking about. Are you saying that Orions do not have access to apples? No, they do, and that's weird, seeing as they don't know what dogs are. We learned that. Yeah, oh, right, yes, yeah, since we started from Lower Decks, you're right. Yeah. But then we get into the, what do the replicators run on? And he's like, it's our shit. Pretty good for shit. Okay, that's a great line. Yeah, it is. He sells it well, yeah. but I hate it so much. Cause yeah. From an... The replicators aren't just shit. They do, it's bad, any kind of matter you can, and to say that everybody in Star Trek's just been eating shit the whole time, and that's all it is, is... Well, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there shit in the replicator? Well, I mean, what, there's what matter Vance... that may have been shit previously, sure, but they do recycle everything, all the matter. Right. But it's so not I think, shit I think what Vance is saying is that when you take a shit, your shit is deconstructed to the atomic level and then yeah. uh-huh. transported to the yeah. rec- replicators yep. mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then reconstituted yeah. into apples. Hey, hey, right. guys, guys, those apples are shit. <laughs> That's what this episode says. <laughs> and, and, more- and, and Wade, this episode is right. <laughs> that is not a point of contention. Based on what you just said to me, that's fact. No, it's, wait, those it's- apples are made from poo <laughs> of pus part of it, but it's not only shit. The right. way this sold it was like everything is just shit in the replicator. Now, so it's like in, no, in wait, it's wait, the wait, wait, it's, wait, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a cheeseburger and I'm gonna tell you that just a little bit of it is <laughs> shit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And we're gonna see if you get mad at me because you <laughs> ate shit. Sh- Glenn I mean Glenn, sorry, <laughs> I did it to you. Why are we both John? Doing- <laughs> Sean, I'm gonna just tell you uh-huh. again. You know every every hamburger you've ever eaten 
Yeah. Has had some shit in it. I yeah, can't, shit. I can't yeah, it's know all this. Shit. Yeah, there hasn't been a hamburger that you... I know. There, there's an acceptable level it's of rat shit, shit and everything. You know what, Glenn, you know what fertilizer is, right? I know what fertilizer <laughs> is. I'm just saying, separate from that issue, which I do find disturbing, and accept is true. Um, yes, I know you would. Yeah. Yeah. Especially well, I was going to say, it, in Admiral Vance's defense, if you told me, <laughs> to much to Sean's <laughs> point, that this food had been deconstructed atomically and reconstituted into real food, but at one point was shit. <laughs> I wouldn't eat it. <laughs> yeah, I know you wouldn't. Yeah, like, like we got two different, uh, y'all are both on different ends of the spectrum. Right, I'd yep. be stoked to eat it. So I'd be like, oh, you can turn shit into this? That's amazing. But then I'd understand, like, I'd be like, no, 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 fair enough that you yeah. would I mean, it. it's... I'd be like, this was shit. The, the, ast- the astronauts on the ISS, even now... Drink their own piss all the time. It's they just do, recycled do, piss. But you know what? They have piss, to bring yeah. more in. It's not just. It's not a closed bring, system. Right. Bring more. Bring more what? It's not piss. lossless no. compression. <laughs> <laughs> we send up just like a shuttle with a jug of piss. Yeah. Hey guys, we got another shipment bring of piss. Water. To- <laughs> Look, we're gonna clean it. <laughs> you turn this into water. <laughs> yeah, we know that's all you drink up here. <laughs> They come back to Earth. They're like, "Oh, water! It just doesn't have that that flavor, man." I, <laughs> yeah, it, I it needs this. more tang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the pun wasn't intended, but I'll take it. It is good. <laughs> but you know, to, to, to get back to your point, Wade, I do agree with you that it is it is selling the replicator technology short to say that it is just shit. I mean, that was a good line. And you're right that he sold it well, but like Sean, the, the the Star Trek establishes long before this that replicators can use almost any kind of oh, matter. No, the no, Voyager no, does establish it's, a, it's all recycled matter. I understand. It's all. It's, yeah, I mean, there's all though I guess the question is for Voyager, are the replicator rations they refer to? I was under the impression that at first that they were claiming that there is a specific kind of matter that they need, but I guess it's more likely that it's a power thing. It's like, oh, you, you know, you have. X amount sure. of because they also refer to holodeck rations and like right. save is, save save that for uh, status yeah, 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 report yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless you, it directly relates. Did you like uh, the tapping? Oh god! The, you know what? I, I like that it turned out to be just like annoying the guards. I thought that. Yeah, was me nice. too. The what? When the when they were doing the, the Morse code. crew escaped. Oh yeah, they're it's, tapping. It's, yeah, right, right. It's space friend solving space problems yeah. as an ensemble. Like yes. for once, that's another thing I liked about this episode. Nobody, it wasn't. I mean, Michael got to be the hero, which was fine. And yeah. I'm not mad that Michael's a hero, but no, like, no, let no, the no. other people do some shit. Exactly. And they, yeah. I think we saw a glimpse of what this show could really look like in, in its best form. Yeah. You know, they they get the whole thing acknowledging capitalism is already happening with the, in the Federation. Right, and yeah. Deep d- Space 253, which is 87 years, so that has been trading with the... The chain. 87 years since they last had contact with them, and they've been trading with the uh, chain for nearly a century. So they've... You know, and, and she's like, just, just let us set up an embassy on... And it's like... That shouldn't be that hard to do. I feel like Deep Space Nine was... That does well, feel pretty easy. Deep Space yeah, right, Nine yeah. was was not even a Federation outpost. So, you know, uh, so I guess that's a whole different art. That's a whole different conversation, I guess. Uh, but, you know, but there are parallels to dealing with like, yeah. the Cardassian Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the Federation is just like the UN with a outpost whatever. and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. An, an right. observation. Right, right. But whatever. And then, you know, the a big problem that the Emerald Chain has is that they also need an amendment to outlaw sa- slavery, and mm. Osiris is like, "Oh, I already did that." It's like, "Oh, did you?" This is another th- point where this episode was great, except for the, all the episodes around it, because like, "Oh, so you've been anti-slavery this whole time? Is that what we're selling, Osiris?" Because mm-hmm. there's that garbage planet where you're just blowing up people's heads, right. and you seem mm-hmm. to be totally fine with slavery. Then, and I think this is—I mean, if we can get into how would I fix this territory. I think the issue is that they they kind of tried to have it both ways in this episode, that Osira both had ulterior motives, but also genuinely was willing to make concessions in order to bring about peace. And right. I, I think... That's what I l- loved about th- this episode, was that it sold it as, she actually does want this shit to happen. Completely but agree she can't, that was really interesting. 
and like like most people like with power she can't she can't let go of her own bullshit like she yeah. like vance is completely right in that okay look i want to do this he does a reverse cisco actually where he's like look i want us to join i want to join the chain with the federation but we can't just ignore uh you know your crimes you have to be held accountable. And the only way to move forward is you can't say slavery was a hundred years ago. Everybody just get over it. You right. need, you need restitution. You, there needs to be justice done for justice to go forward. I mean, it, it, they did the writing was. Yeah. And this episode did that. And, and the fact that in this episode, at least she seemed like that was her goal, but that pride's fucking with her and she can't allow that to happen. It's not that she actually is just a black hat the whole time. It's she can't let go of her own. Well, well and, and, and that's, I think, where my qualms come in is, is that, yeah, the, up to that point, they do a great job of establishing like, no, I think she, you think she actually does want to make a change here and then goes back to her bullshit. But like having her immediately snap back to, you know, evil um, you know, cackling wicked witch of the of the uh, Alpha Quadrant, and just it, th- there's a discordance there that I don't think was necessarily intentional. Like I think if you had had this storyline, for me that discordance was not in this episode. It's spoilers. It's in next episode because mm-hmm. like he, she really wants to do it. She's like on board, but she she's not going to let herself. Because he's saying, you got to go to prison, basically. Right. And right. she's and, like, I can't make that sacrifice. And also, I'm... G- and I'll admit, I'm letting, having already seen the finale, color my perceptions of right. it. So that, no, that, that, it's do, hard but... to kind of divorce that away. Well, I'm I haven't pretend. seen the yeah. finale. And she, uh, and you know, and that turn makes perfect sense to me. That she mm. would be a cat who does genuinely want this, who does seize this as like the way the universe can move forward, but that she just like can't do it. That she like... She needs. She did so much work up to this point that she needs to be, right? You know, the 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 head of what she, or at least not go to prison. Right. 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 Because the the chair guy, she's like, because he Vance is like, we need a face of it. Like it can't be you. And she's like, you're totally right. I under I understand that I can't. Yeah. But he's like, well, it can't be somebody that you're just pulling the strings of. And right. that's when she she's like, oh, I can't be Henry Kissinger, or you know. I just realized another character you could kind of draw a parallel to potentially is um, Dukat from from Deep Space Nine. Like Dukat yeah. is is a character where they kind of he makes several switches back and forth, <laughs> uh, and it's for, the same problem. Ultimately, next episode to get spoilers about it. Like at the end of it, he's just is a black hat that without they they strip all the nuance away and it sucks. Yeah. And of course, yeah. she also does not. She does not have Dukat's uh, just. Uh, uh, Constantly self-sabotaging dick. <laughs> yeah. She, yeah, she's not... Well, I don't think so. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that we know of. Sean, you, you would appreciate that the the, the closest thing uh, Deep Space Nine has to, like, a main recurring villain is just constantly at the mercy of his uh, Bajoran fever. <laughs> yeah. That's very funny. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean... Even it's it's a line that Paul gets to the Invigilator Aurelio, <laughs> which that fucking title is that's, uh, ridiculous. That's rough. That's rough. And I love it. That sounds like something out of Doctor Who, to be totally honest. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. Like, she's more than what she appears to be, sure, but also she's exactly what she appears to be. Yeah. Like, and, that's, and that's what I'm talking about, where it's like, how how much better would that stuff have landed if, like, you did see you know, occasional glimpses of like the good side of Osira and right. That's the, yeah. that's the thing. Like this, uh, I've complained about this show before, like they get good things and they're like, Oh, that's good. And then they, they don't build them. They don't yeah. drop things. Right. Right. They're, they're, they're like, like, that's a good line for the penultimate episode of the season. Right. Oh, I had a great idea for this. And then like, Oh, th- you know, maybe if you had more time to build the season out, like yeah. you write all your episodes and I had a great idea in episode you know, 12, and then, like, it'd be nice, but I understand Mega TV's hard, that you're, then you're like, oh, that's great. That changes how the whole character works. We have to go back and do rewrites on the character to make it mm. better. Like, I don't know. That would have been nice, but I get that making a TV show is hard, and they'd already probably shot most of episode one yeah. before they wrote this one. And, right. You know. <sighs> yeah. And then the uh, Ren sacrifices everything, the 
blue guy with this cut off antenna. <laughs> the hard choices that this episode made, like with Paul and Michael at the end, oof, like that was rough. finally that was rough, but it was earned. I yeah, thought. yeah, that was. That did, when he says we came here for you, like yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah, I agree yeah. with you, Paul. <laughs> what the fuck? Yep. Yeah, like Paul won't go, and Michael makes the choice for him, which is you know like it's good character work, and you know I did think it might sell a little bit better if. For a second, I believed if if the situations were reversed, if she would not be doing the same thing for book, and yep, and right. then somehow winning the day. Yep. <laughs> but but you know whatever that doesn't take away that that was good that they did this. It's just I again I wish the, the whole show around it could make it yeah uh, make these kind of decisions except outside of this episode. But hmm. I do uh, feel like they could have done it. Just go back to the nebula and just go get the. I, I yeah. yeah, I like I like the choice like for character development. Like I like it for the moment. I like it in a vacuum, but also like the spore drive so fast. Just uh, pop back, grab them, and then pop back. You know, like it wouldn't. Yeah, I don't know. But well, and yeah. this is where it all gets muddled because like oh, the burn is caused by this guy on the planet, and it's like it. Well, they she can't leave Paul there because they Osiris still has the ship. Right, she and, still has yeah. control of the ship, and right. she can't use the spore drive if they don't have him. Right, right. so he's too valuable to stay yeah, there because no, they could go back and save him, but then they lose the galaxy or whatever, and then or they figure out how to do it without him or whatever reason. So the only, yeah, right, yeah, and then and the Vance again, like I said, like to where he actually lays out what the Federation is good for. Like since the burn, there's been a legacy of fear, isolation and scarcity that clouds everyone's moral clarity. That's why it's, I mean, it's capitalism. Like, you know, and he's like, but what the Federation stands for in this post scarcity world is like that. We could, we don't have to worry about uh, hoarding resources so that we can, we can just give it freely. That's it's a clarity that I fight for daily. And it's the clarity that I ask Everyone to die for. That's that's what the Federation's about. Like that kind of moral because the Federation yeah. does ask that of all the people. And it's the reason that like I'm not gonna sacrifice that moral clarity for political reasons. And this is where he does like a reverse Cisco. And if we can't meet if we can't reach an accord because of you can't do the moral thing, then I can live with that. Which is sorry. Glenn gets it. That's the reverse no, I totally Cisco. Get it. Yeah, where, yeah, like, Cis- yeah where, Cisco. Like, I lied. I murdered people, all in the name of you know saving the Federation. I, all, all I all I see right now is him raising the glass to the to right. The, all the all it took was my soul, basically. But you know what? If that saves everybody I love, I can live with that. Yeah. And this is like the reverse. Is like God, if that. Yeah. Damn, Team Space Nine was so good. <laughs> Yeah, and he's and even and he, he 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 points like your people are good like you know it's the same thing as I I I hate to get all lefty you know <laughs> political about it it's like most Americans are good but we have shitty policy <laughs> decisions that murder people every you know outside so yeah so you just ask our leaders to be as good as you know good people are Mm -hmm. yes i mean so i mean this all just gets to the point that like there's really interesting stuff buried here and and, and in some cases not buried but like the fact that like this is like the exception rather than the rule of discovery i think is is the issue is that this is not they did not commit to this dynamic before this episode right and yeah and and she gives the post the other side of the view to Aurelia when she's about to kill Ren, like this is how progress is made. And I tried to shade, I tried to shield you from it because I know it doesn't sit well. And it's actually kind of, but you know what? It's not always pleasant. And that's, that's the kind of realist view of, you know, mm. why we, ha- why we have black sites and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other, other episodes this season aren't, complex like other episodes this season do not ask like difficult questions they don't present the world in really anything other than like they're right good 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 and it's like well okay but like the world is really complicated now like there's no warp like they left planets out there with no connection like to this thing that they thought they were connected to like it all fucking like that matters. 
all season that should have mattered, you know? Like, yeah. it's not... And, like, only now, only now they're like, there are shades of gray here. And I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, where were these? Yeah. Where were exactly. they? Where, where was this yeah. up to this point? Yeah, I don't... I, yeah. I, I, I feel bad that, like, all I can say about this episode is that I like it and then to complain about past episodes. Right, But, right. like, that is just, like, this episode is so fucking frustrating because it would be, like, such a satisfying thing to watch Osira, like, come to, like, the, the apex of her story. Like, when we've watched her throughout this whole thing, like, be complicated, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and they had the, yeah... Uh, whoever wrote this did a good job to introduce yes! characters and it to make her complicated, but like, uh, it's too little, too late, I guess. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Let that fucking guy write a Star Trek season. Apparently, right. I don't the, know. The guy that the, the you know, we've been complaining they can't kill fucking anybody on this show. Yeah, uh, they finally kill Rin at the end, and he yeah. has a good, you know, he has a good speech before he dies about like yeah he does i'm not afraid of you you know i used to be and i've seen what real strength you know because the federation values you know have shown me that i can make a sacrifice and that love is stronger than fear you know platitudes that i actually try to believe in or whatever right and And it's why she has to kill him even like in front of right and aurelio because she because like he if he's not afraid of her, then she loses. Right, like, right. She knows and, that, yeah, so. yeah, it's like, are you not yeah. afraid of me? It's like, fear doesn't last forever. And she gets, it's a good line where she's like, I don't need forever. And they just. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. You know, it's, it's pithy. It's, but it's not, it doesn't, it didn't feel overwritten. No. Oh God. No, this episode didn't feel overwritten. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy because like the Admiral of Starfleet sat down with a hostile like force and, like, had a really long conversation. Yeah. And it did not feel overwritten. Like, it didn't feel overwrought. It was a 47-minute episode, which is, like, yeah. a minute longer than standard network. Right. Which is, like, okay, that's great. Like, Yeah. They did a lot of work in, like, a, a, a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. And then and then at the end, like, Eve from WALL-E shows up. and <laughs> Oh, I hate it. I forgot about that. Yeah. And I didn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, hey, oh, what's the... hey, I didn't like it. I didn't either. <laughs> and it was fine. It's bad. It's, 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 this is our return of the. Uh, this is Empire Strikes Back, and next week we've got uh, Jedi and Ewoks. And yeah. Here's our Ewoks. <laughs> right. So they. Okay. So what? So yeah. Okay. Whole oh, fuck you. God, fuck <laughs> you for reminding me of that, that happened. So they're so. Right, <laughs> That's what so they go out on. It sure is. So he's looking at the ship systems. He's like, there's one thing we can't take over. And it's like old television. Yep. And, yes. like, and that's, so that's the spore drive. Not this one. No, not the, no, 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 the sphere data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's, that's the sphere data. The, 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 okay. I don't and know. She, and she like shut it down. So it goes to live in, in, uh, the, in Wally's girlfriend. Right. And then. <laughs> Eva. Eva. Yeah. That'll make me cry. Stupid. Um, that movie's great. This show's yeah. stupid. <laughs> right? That's why I texted you guys that the show's stupid. That's why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Because I liked the episode. Yeah, yeah. And then three little little robots showed up, and they're like, we are the spirit data. <laughs> right. Writing your command, Captain. And I'm like, get fucked! That's <laughs> yeah. nothing! I, I, I got that text, and I was sweating a little bit. Because, like, no, I finally lo- like really liked an episode. Again, no, the you're episode's gonna shit good all as it. shit, but it's stupid. Stupid! Nope. That's You're- dumb. <laughs> well, just wait till you see what they do next week. Oh fuck me! Nothing? Is it nothing? It better um, be nothing. I don't want them. It's not nothing. I know. Well, well, Sean, I think I think I know how to cheer you up. Unless there's anything else you guys want to talk about no. in the episode, I don't have anything else to talk about. Yeah, che- cheer us up. Cheer us up. Yeah, go right. ahead. <laughs> Status report. Doesn't that always cheer you up, Sean? Yeah, it's my favorite um, segment of uh, my time in hell. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is the point of the podcast where Sean gets up and walks away <laughs> and comes back and says, that was great, guys. Uh, I'm gonna go no, my well, dog. lucky for you, I can see you on video. Um, <laughs> but uh, so uh, the, the big news is that I am very nearly done with Voyager. I don't care. I've got I'm, I'm in season seven. So I've got I think I've got about uh, 10, 15 or 13 episodes left, I think. 
mm-hmm. um, which means I will then move on to Enterprise, which means I am I am truly in the home home run stretch here. And uh, the overall percentage here is eighty six point one nine, which I think is notable because I think I may have overtaken Wade your number as best as we estimated it before. I can't remember. Well, exactly. that's that's the thing. I don't know, and I will never know, and I don't well, care. Like, and I know it's very important to you to beat me. And uh, this is the worst I mean, thing look. about fandom. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, this all is I the have to say is the worst thing about liking anything. Look, am, I would never, I would never lord this over anyone besides Wade. Uh-huh. Like, I, well, I, you're anyone welcome who to try. I don't care. Like, right? You, you fiz- You, you cannot lord it over. You might have the numbers, but I've had more time in the service. I think that, that is I true. That, that is true. You, you will always have that. But you know, look, I, you come in here, but I live here, <laughs> Barton. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I make in, as many in, Barton Finks references as I can, but they're for me. I'll show you the life of the mind. That's um, right. That's I will. I will look upon me. <laughs> and I will not um, say the the anti-Semitic part because I'm not. Yeah, don't don't like, don't say that, that please. Um, just not just Can't release me from <laughs> the the bed frame with the handcuffs. Um, yes. But uh, nope, of, you're of, gonna be of, chained of, to my bed forever, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just oof, do it while you're just smirking at me and pulling the metal part. Ugh, what a great movie. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, back to Trek. So yeah, no, I mean in all sincerity, like I, I I'm not gonna, I, I do not want to be a gatekeeper because I agree, Sean. That's like the worst thing about fandom. But now I feel kind but. of no, 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 no. But I, I feel good about being. But able oh, to... I more Star Trek than you, motherfucker. <laughs> no, yeah. that's not. Get off gonna... my podcast. That's not what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, you know, if I ever talk to someone now who's like, oh, I haven't seen Star Trek and I'm interested or, or whatever, I feel confident. I'd be like, well, I, I have a pretty good idea of like what you might like. You know, the Voyagers like this, Deep Space Nine is kind of more of like a prestige uh, format as we understand it and uh, I I feel confident that I can you know at least accurately describe the breadth of Star Trek to someone and also I feel like I'll talk about this once I watch 100% of everything but I I I have a I feel like I have a good grasp of like what the pure intent and meaning of Star Trek is Uh, that's probably a corny way of putting it but like you know, that's you'd say, so yeah, you're saying you know better than anybody else. That's <laughs> exactly, and I will be so angry at anyone who suggests otherwise. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, no, but uh, no, I've I've enjoyed I've enjoyed the vast majority of what I've watched, and okay, I have to stop talking yeah. because Star Sean Trek, is it's a good time. Sean is reading Batman versus Predator. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, <laughs> A comic I've never read, but I've heard good things about. I actually hear that one's a good. Right. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'll let <Anyway>. you know. <laughs> God damn it. So anyway, uh, Voyager in particular, I really like it. I like Voyager a lot. It's not, I, I don't know if I'd rank it above D Space Nine or TNG at the end of the day, but like it does what it does well. Like it's, it is a, the B team, like TNG criticism to me is not necessarily criticism. It's like, it's it, again, it, it's it does, comfort food. Yeah, it's comfort food. Like it's, it. it's very good comfort food. I like most of the characters. Uh, Robert Picardo is he's fucking yeah, no, he's fantastic. Um, and I, I I think Jerry Ryan does a really great job. Seven and Nine's great character too. Uh, Harry Kim. <laughs> Harry Kim, you know, because the people on the Discord uh, have been talking about Tom him. Tom Tom Paris. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> I do on. I really like, relate to him as a uh, privileged white guy. Uh, <laughs> I, I do appreciate that there is, to our modern understanding, a almost literal virgin and Chad dynamic with uh, yeah. Tom and Harry. Um, as a privileged white guy with a hot wife, I really relate to uh, <laughs> that. That I don't deserve. Um, yeah, and which, but in, in all seriousness, like, yeah, it's, it's Tom and Harry. They're they're fine. They're fine. Like they, 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 like Harry. I can understand why people don't really like that character because, like, there's not really anything to him besides like a bland optimism. And um, even like the episodes that focus on him are kind of just about how he's just a boy scout. Fun tidbit and- I learned on the Discord about him is like apparently 
they were going to fire him instead of Kess, but then he won, like, he was on the People Top 100, like, hottest or something, and so they had to keep him on. Yeah, you, well, at that point, you got to keep him on, which that, <laughs> that does suck, because I like Kess, too. I thought Kess was an interesting character, yeah. especially when she... Because, you know, everybody just thinks Harry Kim is so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Perpetual yeah, d- ensign. The end of the segment. All right, yeah, fine. We should end. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, well um, uh, uh, anyway, Voyage is great. Star Trek's great. Enjoying all of it. I, I might, I won't be done by the time we finish recording Disco, but I'm. It's. It might be pretty soon. I, I might be done by by the end of April at least. Great. So when anyway. when does uh when does another Star Trek something come out? <sighs> I I think the uh, pandemic is really uh, yeah, yeah fucked them. Ch- Fucked them, which you know what? Yeah, uh, I, I think they. I think they claim that Strange New Worlds may come out premiere late this year, but I'm skeptical that that would happen. Yeah, we'll try to get it in for. Yeah, I straight anyway. up called it weird places to my wife. Well, it's from the it's from the, the it's from it. the preamble of TOS, like just to, to seek out Strange New Worlds. I, oh my god! We, we, <laughs> all right, I, in I, the I, segment. Ha! <laughs> hey. Hey, <laughs> stay in your lane. <laughs> Getting a little close to uh, yeah. Folsom Prison Tunes over yeah, there. Exactly. Get out of my, get out of my lane, Hall. All right, uh, all, right. all right. Well, that's it. That's status report. Tell us about all your right. bullshit podcast, Sean. Oh, I was called you Tom because Tom Paris was on the brain. Uh, well, it's my middle name, so you would have been close. Oh, there you go. Middle named after Tom Parada. Not yeah. named after Tom Paris from Voyager. No, no, it, it, no. it's a much better. To be a much better person to be named after. Yeah, better to yeah. be named after an one, acclaimed author than a one. He's mid- he's real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're related a, to him. It's a human being, uh, a, a, a nice man, Oscar nominated. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, fantastic yeah. writer. Good guy. Yeah, he's, he's good. Yeah. Uh, the fun, uh, the fun, like slight I read about him once is that uh, Tom Parada books make really good TV shows. And I said, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and his his books are his books are good, but uh, it is funny how good, like how much better the adaptations do yeah. tend to be. But that's a Mark Millar thing, by the way. Do you want me to keep any of this in? Oh, I don't care. Yeah, okay. I, 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 look yeah. At well, no, I, I. That's that's a Tom would also think that's funny. I'm sure he's heard. Of okay, it. okay. Tom's a good writer. I like his books. I don't. Care. Okay, thank <laughs> but uh, you know. But I, I, yeah, but I don't like any of his books anywhere near as much as I like The Leftovers. The Leftovers so. is great. Yeah. There's our plug for the week. The Sorry about your podcast. Uh, I've plugged it. These people are so <laughs> sick of hearing about my podcast. Well, I, now I it's real, play. though. Yeah, but it's been real for weeks now. We're fine. Go listen. You know what it is. Uh, but if you, if, if, if any listener is like, I'm either going to listen to Sean's podcast or watch The Leftovers, watch The Leftovers <laughs> immediately. That show is so fucking good. You could watch a season of The Leftovers in the time it takes you to listen to one episode of Folsom Prison Tunes. <laughs> Fuck you. Get fucked. Only I mean, like I'm not episode wrong. three is that long. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you could, you'd have to. Uh, that's right. I guess it's not. It's not quite. No, the leftovers is ten hour yeah, long episodes. Right. Okay, you have to, you'd have to listen to at least two of his podcasts to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna kill both of you. <laughs> no, you won't. I don't know how to end the show though because it's Saturday. I do not. Have you to don't work. have to go to work. Well, just uh, d- d- shit. Um, I don't have to go to work. I mean, I just sh- hey. Oh, I got. It, I got. It, I got it. Shut the fuck up. I got Star Trek to watch. <laughs> No, God, Ugh, my yeah. kid's gonna wake up in a minute, and I yeah. I, oh, that's okay. Yeah. That's better. More, more urgent. <laughs> All right, we're see you for the finale. Ooh, Ooh yeah. Stop yee hawing.